So we have uh, Maria here in Hello. Edinburgh. Uh, Maria, you are such a funny, you are such a funny comedian. Uh, I uh, the first time I saw your art, I was like, ah! I told the Basha, please book this woman as much as possible. I I don't mind seeing you every day. I just enjoy your your comedy so much. And uh, uh, you want to introduce yourself a bit? Yeah, I'm Maria Fedulova. I'm a Russian comedian. Now I live in London. I married a British comedian called Sam Rhodes, and now this is this is where we are now. Now I'm doing my first show in Edinburgh. It's called Russian Mafia Family. I have a poster. It's gonna probably fly away, uh -huh. but I have a whole bag of them. <laughs> <laughs> Russian Mafia Family. Look, it's me. It's uh -huh. me. Uh -huh. I want stuff. Some stuff. Uh -huh. So you know, it's good. Mm -hmm. It's good. Edinburgh is going good. Okay. And the 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 question is, uh, the important question is. Mm. Uh, you and Sam Road. Sam Rhodes. Yeah, Sam Rhodes. Yes. Who's funnier? Who's, oh, that's a good question. I think we're both very good, but in a different way. Uh -huh. And we have very different style of comedy. Uh -huh. And this is why I like it. Being married mm. to a stand-up comedian is like living in the writer's room 24-7. Uh -huh. Yeah, Because yeah, yeah. we always write jokes, we have fun. Yeah. And actually, that's the best thing about my day. If I make mm. Sam laugh, like genuinely laugh uh -huh. for saying something. Uh -huh. If I make him laugh, that means that that was a good day. It's so, my favorite thing. So you do that comedy? Is that right? Yeah. How do you characterize the type of comedy you do? I do stand-up comedy. Mm -hmm. So it's just, you know, there are comedians who are like more in, you know, delivery or more in, I'm, I'm, I like writing jokes. Like my material is more like literature based. Uh -huh. So I like writing jokes uh -huh. and delivering, telling jokes from the stage. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, how, how long have you been in this craft? I started in 2019. Oh. I came to the Fringe in 2019 for the first time. I just started doing You comedy. started and you already yeah. had the courage to come here. Yeah, I didn't know. I didn't know uh. that I needed courage because I didn't know about the Fringe and my friends, my Russian comedian friends told me and they went to the Fringe and I thought, yeah, why not? I'm going to go with you. And day three of my first Fringe, I met Sam outside. Uh. I met my future husband. Was it a hookup thing? Mm, we thought it would be, mm -hmm. but now we're married, mm -hmm. so you know. Okay. Well, it's gonna be you know nice fringe romantic adventure, but now we're married. We're married for two years now. <laughs> so is it a marriage, uh, a visa marriage, or is it a love marriage? Oh, love marriage. Of course, love marriage. You say to the immigrant office, that's uh, the answer. That's what the answer is. I said, I love this man so much. Please uh -huh. let me stay in the country. But uh, you are not here for his visa. You are a refugee yourself. I'm a refugee myself, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you are not relying on him? No, independent uh, woman. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> and uh, the question is, what made you, what made him to pop the question? Did you like suggest it or did you just came? Not at all, not at all. I uh -huh. think I'm just, you know, he's so much in love. Uh -huh. He couldn't do long distance relationships anymore and he uh -huh. finally proposed uh -huh. and I said yes uh -huh. and you know, now I live in London. Okay, so. and previously where you live? In Russia, it's uh, around Moscow, like two hours away from and Moscow. And you didn't think it takes courage from Russia directly come to Scotland to do comedy when you just started, you didn't think it takes courage? I didn't really think about it. Uh -huh. I like, you know, I like doing fun things. I like uh, grabbing opportunities when uh -huh. they come. So, and try not to say no to things that might potentially be adventurous. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm sorry, I feel really uh, affectionate with you because I just feel, I, I just... Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, for, for me, when I see like fellow comedian, female comedian who's like a fire, I just I just have this love for them. Um, so, wow, that's impressive. And before pre comedy, what did you do? Well, I for the uh, five years, for well, the five years before I came to the UK, because I was not allowed to work anymore. Uh -huh. I used to work as a YouTube producer. Why um, you were not allowed to work? I was when I came. When you apply for asylum in the UK, you are uh -huh. not allowed to work. But the, as 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 a Russian person, can you just come to UK and say I'm a refugee, or you have to hire someone to beat you up first? No, you don't need to hire. <laughs> you have to beat you up first. Uh, in Russia, they can do it for free. You don't really need to pay them. Uh huh. But when you come, anyone can claim asylum. Uh huh. Anyone. So uh huh. You know.
know, if they any Russian person can come here become a any, refugee. Any person can become come, can come here. Any foreigner can come and claim asylum. No, I don't believe that. Well, it's true. Don't. This is how asylum works. But do you have to be oppressed. Do well, I'm Russian. I am oppressed. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's <laughs> true. But I heard uh, like a. Probably not now, but I heard like 20, 30 years ago, all those uh, Chinese people like uh, come to Europe illegally, they have to hire people to beat them up. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, seriously, yeah. Um, well, you do whatever it takes because uh, we, want, we want the passport so much. Uh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. do whatever it takes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, so, uh, great. And what a mental illness you have. <laughs> Ooh, I wouldn't say I have mental illness, but I because you know it's a big deal and we don't we don't need to devalue it for people. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. I think who have mental illnesses, but yeah, I think for people from our countries, we try to use all kinds of ways to describe it to avoid the word itself. Mm -hmm. Because when you don't label it, you don't have it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what do you suspect? Like what do you experience? Oh, I'm a very anxious person. Mm -hmm. I'm an anxious person. Mm -hmm. I have, I think, uh, like every artist, I kind of suffer from imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh my God, I don't deserve everything that happens to me. They gonna know that I'm, you know, I'm lying. I'm, I don't have to. Oh, it's not. No, it's all happened by mistake. But it, does it happen constantly, or there are moments you think, oh, I'm great? Yeah, for five minutes I may think that I'm great, but then immediately, uh, you know, maybe not so great actually. You know, like you have. 100 positive comments on something and one negative comment mm. and you and that's it you're just so concentrated on it you start thinking about it all the time uh, you just have it in your head mm. so it's like that you know yeah. anxiety um, there are ways to deal with it so I, I wouldn't say that it's very overwhelming uh -huh. but this is why like my husband helps me with it a lot uh -huh. because he's so different from me like also psychologically very positive guy very objective in a way and he helps me he grounds me all the time mm -hmm. so you know I don't really complain online about uh, you know stuff about uh, anxiety or about you know how fringe is going because it's a really fun thing yeah and we all like to be here we all chose to be here yeah so it's good fun but when I feel a little bit down I always message my husband my mom's very supportive so you know mm -hmm. it helps it helps and uh I, I feel I'm just a, amazed. I'm amazed to know that uh, you feel like you are an imposter. And uh, because I really, as soon as I heard your comedy, I just loved you. Yeah. And I uh, just want to get to know you and uh, see you perform as often as possible. And, um, but I, I wonder if, uh, if there's some part of me is like that. Mm -hmm. Because I also why we often fear imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. I and uh, I I often say I'm not anxious. My my issue is mostly depression. But um, I must be anxious. I must be anxious because uh, there are so many ways. Can you hold it? Yes. Definitely. There are so many ways inside of me, and uh, uh, why we often I I hear those ways. I feel like. Uh, mm, uh, People don't uh, respect me. I fear people think I'm just rude. I'm not really doing comedy. And I fear they are thinking like, uh, um, I have bad accent. I fear, yeah, all those negative words. And, uh, but I don't know which one is real, which one is just, I imagined mm -hmm. it. And uh, then when someone actually come to you and say something, you always afraid. And then my brain would go, oh, it's true, everyone thinks so. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that going the similar to you, or you have a different uh, symptoms, like uh, different uh, expressions of your anxiety? Mm, rumination. When you have a thought in your head and you just keep thinking about it and thinking about it and concentrating mm -hmm. on it and you can't get it out of your head. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know, I feel like it really helps to try and be objective about some things. Like mm. I told you, you have a mm. hundred positive things and then one is, oh, you know, 99 positive things, one is negative. Mm. Like someone said something mm -hmm. or it wasn't like a comment. Mm -hmm. And we concentrate on that a lot. But mm -hmm. 
uh, objective reality says that 99% of people liked it or you know so it's the main problem is not having this uh, how do I say like this pivot like this platform inside yourself that you can rely on uh, this is why I'm, I feel I see a lot of men having this like inner um, confidence and they can rely on themselves they don't really need like when I talk to my friends here male friends especially during the fringe to comedians they have this inner confidence that they're all right they don't need anyone else's opinion and if this opinion is shit they don't care and you know they just keep moving keep going on I but I don't have it I always feel like I need someone else somewhere say that I'm good you know what I say like oh, just make it go yeah. <laughs> and it's really really hard but when you when you start sorry to interrupt yeah. Maria I like you so much I'm going to share you my yearly one, one once a year mm -hmm. uh, I buy a fudge in Edinburgh oh. and I want to share you the first bite of my fudge oh my god that's such an honor yeah 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 but it's, uh, that shows how much I appreciate you. Oh, hungry. that's that's. I'm really, really, really flattered. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good. So Love far, it. you are one of my favorite performers. Oh, I just can't. Come on, you spoil me. I just can't forget you. You come here, really. Like uh, how how good you are. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. And um, <coughs> sore throat. <laughs> I just literally bought uh, like a box of syrups. Oh, you want? I also have. A, I have water. Uh -huh. Oh no. <laughs> Another bag thrown away. And, uh, okay, continue. What are we were talking about? Yeah, I mean, um, you said about that I'm a foreigner as well. Yeah. You said that you're worried about the accent. Yeah. I think that in this country, people are so used to hearing all sorts of different accents. Mm -hmm. Because in the UK, there's a lot of accents. Mm -hmm. In uh, big cities like Edinburgh or London, lots and lots of foreigners live and they all have different accents okay. so I think here people are really okay with it okay. because they you know mm, a little they bit, don't mind a little bit of interruption the the voice inside of me is not about the audience don't like my accent yeah. but I feel there are comedians looking down on me for me not being able to speak proper English and um, this probably is not a common thing. Probably it happened once or twice in my six years of comedy career. But um, as I said many times, like um, the biggest show is the one in your brain. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, maybe it only happened twice, but uh, it stuck with me because I agree with it. Mm -hmm. mm. So, yeah. And it's really, yeah, even if it happens once or twice, it's really hard. I feel like I remember every single negative thing somebody said about me, you know, somewhere online or, you know, they never do it in public, so it's mostly online. <laughs> so uh, I feel like I think about Are you it a famous lot. online as me? I wouldn't say so. Uh, how many I'm, followers do you have? Oh, I just started my page in English, so it looks pathetic. It's 300 followers. Then, then why you have people criticize you if it's 300 <laughs> people? Well, you know, if I appear on my friend's podcast, like mm. yours or something mm. like this, mm -hmm. I'd be like, you know, I'm looking at the comments and all of them are good. But one of them says, hmm, not so sure about Maria, you know, something like that. And I'm like, oh shit, oh no. Mm. Yeah, something like that. One thing I try to learn is that I shared a few times on this podcast already. Uh, one thing is negative comments is like rain. Does that work? It's like a rain. It's like mm -hmm. bad weather. Mm -hmm. Statistically, it will happen. Nobody is loved by any everybody. There are people who don't like pe uh, like uh, um, Beatles. Mm -hmm. There are people like who don't. Like if you go to like a uh, like a Beethoven, like a, any of his music on YouTube, you can find a negative comment on Beethoven. Absolutely. So, so just just to accept it that statistically there will be people don't like you, mm -hmm. and uh, one and and it, statistically it's a it's a hundred percent chance sooner or later someone will not like you mm -hmm. and if you are upset by something will definitely happen at one point mm -hmm. if you are upset by that 
then you are just putting your mood, your happiness onto something completely random. Yeah, and also there's something that doesn't really depend on you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As well. Yeah, and, right. and then another thing I have been thinking about in the past few days is I'm trying to tell myself that the most successful people, like the online personalities, it's always those people being hated. Like the best balance is like 60% of people love you and 40% of people hate you. And they can argue with each other, you get all the engagement and it's good for you to have some yeah. haters. Someone hate you, someone defend you, you get the conversation going. So now when hater happens, I'm like, okay, please some attack, attack me more. So it's like when I think about this way, when, when hater comes, I was like, okay, you are just having me to get the engagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good way to think about it. Mm -hmm. It's the, uh, yeah, I try to remind myself every now and then there's like a Russian uh, saying that I'm not a hundred dollar bill. Not mm. everybody is going to like me. Mm -hmm. So, you know, uh -huh. and it's absolutely fine. The main thing is to find your audience, I think, mm -hmm. in comedy especially, mm -hmm. uh, is to find your audience. And it's absolutely not important what other comedians say about you. Mm -hmm. I keep reminding myself as well, because other comedians don't pay us money. Yeah, and another thing is, um, I, for example, I, I watched some really, really famous comedian. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to name the names. They are like international, globally famous. I want to see their show, I'm like, oh, I don't like it. But I know their comedy is not bad. It's just I don't like it. Mm -hmm. So, so how if they are on TV, they are on Netflix, they are touring around the world, they are still people don't like their comedy. How could I expect? Everyone loves my comedy. Mm -hmm. So I just need to find the niche who loves me. And those people who don't love me, they don't matter. Mm -hmm. Why instead of uh, like be with those people who love me? and they enjoy the, the wine, the support they give me instead of cherish all those beautiful things why I spend my energy, my mind on someone who don't matter mm -hmm. and regarding comedian um, whatever happens um, especially like when it happens statistically most of the comedians who don't like you they are not full-time comedian. They are not professional comedian. Absolutely, they yes. are not even funny. What the fuck they know? They do most of them. Yeah, even they did it for ten years, fifteen years. They have daytime job, and uh, yeah, they are not famous. They are not successful. They are not even good. I don't fucking care about them. Mm -hmm. So You're very, it's very true. If they know better, they wouldn't be there. They wouldn't be there for for how many years they have been doing comedy. Yeah, I have lots of uh, very good comedian friends and I think mm. it's important to have good comedy friends as well mm -hmm. uh, if you can find them because first of all you have some support uh, and you have, you know, feedback, you have a good friend but mm. also it's important, it's good for connections because mm. comedy is such a small world mm -hmm. and I feel like uh, first day of the Fringe I met guys from South Africa, comedians from uh, South Devin? Africa uh, I think so, oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Kombucha Bay the mm. guy was, the, mm. his act in, mm. in, 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 the, in the fringe. Another and guy is not yeah. a demon. Yeah. Okay, and I asked them if they know another comedian who performed with me in Russia, who stayed there during lockdown, Mamzi. And they said, yeah, yeah, we know him. And we took a selfie, and they sent this picture to him, and he's like, oh my god, are you guys in Russia? Say hello to Maria. And um, this shows that comedy is a very small world. And what I like about it, it's, um, it's really um, not beneficial to be a dickhead, Mm -hmm. Because everybody's gonna know that you're a dickhead, yeah. and nobody's gonna book you for a show. Yeah. And people are gonna say, "Oh, don't book Maria; she's shit." You yeah, know. Yeah. And it's it's really nice because most people are nice, uh -huh. and I really like it. But everybody loves the gossip. Uh -huh. You know, it's very lots of lots of toxic people. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I like gossip too. Uh, <laughs> well, I do too. But I, I guilty. But uh, but scientifically, gossip is human nature because uh, when we were monkeys, we just uh, uh, got the lies from each other. And then we evolve, we don't have lies anymore, and the gossip is a replacement for oh, building like. this uh, bonding. And uh, I think I'm a fair person, like when I bitch about people, I'm always fair. Uh, <laughs> and uh, even in the heat of the moment, I may be really angry. Afterwards, I have the capacity to realize, oh, maybe it's a misunderstanding. And uh, when I bitch about people, it's always behind their back. 
<laughs> you might be on camera, but behind their back. Um, so, um, the sun is really bright. Yeah, the sun is bright. The sun is bright. Um, so, uh, what we were talking about? Sorry, I have ADHD. Uh, we were talking about uh, how comedians gossip, yeah. other comedians' opinions about that, and yeah. how it does look better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, have you done, like, uh, you started comedy in Russia? Russian? Yeah. Are you still doing comedy in Russian? I'm doing a little bit of comedy in Russian because uh, in London there is a big, there's a lot of Russian speakers. There, there are Russians everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But there are lots of Russian speakers. There would also be Ukrainians, uh -huh. people from Belarus, mm -hmm. Kazakhstan, basically mm -hmm. all post Soviet countries, mm -hmm. uh, Baltic countries, Latvia, Estonia, Lithuania. Mm -hmm. And uh, we bring comedians from time to time, uh, Russian speaking comedians, because lots of them left Russia now. Yeah, yeah for some and reason. For some reason. Yeah. For, for a very good reason uh -huh. and uh, yeah and I sometimes run open mics like once a month I run a little open mic I is have it a Russian speaking open mic? it is uh, yeah, yeah. I, I have a few uh, guys in London who do comedy in Russian so they come every now and then once a month and they do their five minutes and it's all, always a good show mm -hmm. and oh my god everybody needs to learn from Russian speakers buckets on those shows are incredible last time I did a show do you know how much was in my bucket? 400 pounds. Mm -hmm. I have 40 How many people, people in the audience. 40 people in the wow, audience. Wow, that's good. Bucket. 400 pounds. Yesterday I had 13 people in the audience. Did I have 130 pounds in my bucket? Did I fuck? It was 15 pounds. Uh -huh. Come on, uh, British people, keep up. Come on. Comedy, mm -hmm. you need to support it. Uh, if you do Russian speaking comedy in the West, have you had people come into the show and shout, I love Putin? Well, I think in London it doesn't really happen uh, a lot because uh, there's, you know, people are more liberal mm -hmm. in London. Mm -hmm. But when you go outside, and they emigrated recently, most mm -hmm. of them work in IT, so they left Russia, you know, approximately two years ago <laughs> when the war broke out. What happened? <laughs> uh, yeah, and if you go outside of London, you know, to smaller cities around um, around London, you will have more pro-Putin people. Mm -hmm. Same situation in Germany, I heard, and stuff like that. They're called Putin Versteyers. Really? Yes. Wow. Like Putin understanders. And that's, uh, I don't blame them. Uh, it happens because um, people left really long time ago when mm -hmm. it was like season two of Putin. Ooh, and now it's season two. eight. <laughs> now, and they don't know what's going on. Uh -huh. And I don't know, they're just ignorant. But I, I, I have a theory, it's not about uh, Russia, but uh, about China. I heard from a friend, they said, um, the people who the most pro-China, pro the the whole thing, are, are some Chinese people abroad. Because for them, they are probably, they are from the upper class, they are the people who have privileges, and uh, they were living in a bubble, they were never oppressed, and they had money. And when you had money in China, the labor is cheap as fuck. You can have people wash your feet every day. Mm -hmm. And so they were never suffered from the whole thing. And then they come abroad. Um, and uh, when you are a Chinese abroad, the better China does, the better, the more you, uh, the more you can enjoy, the more thing you can you can have in life because when China is powerful, you get a better reputation, all kinds of things. Um, so they they can fully enjoy the the uh, effect of China being powerful, but they don't experience any of the side effects. Mm -hmm. So um, that's my theory. Mm -hmm. That's a very good theory. I think you're right. Mm -hmm. I don't know uh, much about. Uh, you know what's going on right now in China, but recently I listened to a very interesting podcast. Uh, I, we Maoism. need to stop here. We need to stop okay. here. Uh, China is great. Okay. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I I started this, but uh, yeah, yeah. No, I, I yeah. I'm just saying that I don't know much about the yeah. situation. This is why I'm really interested yeah, in yeah. what you were telling. I me. I, I realize I shouldn't talk too much about this. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And my mom is still there. So I okay. understand. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, so uh, we are talking about. You have anxiety. Do you have something else? <sighs> I think food comforts me a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to lose weight, but while I'm so nervous, I can't. 
You can't imagine what this tiny piece of fudge is doing it's, for me right it's now. So <laughs> it's so fucking good. sweet. It's so, so sweet. Yeah, and all those things. So yeah, I mean, it, you know. And uh, people, and uh, everybody, choo they say choose your drug, and I chose mayonnaise. <laughs> and uh, talking about food, uh, do you categorize yourself having uh, eating disorders? I wouldn't say so because I, I still say I feel like uh, we shouldn't like people like me shouldn't take away these things from other people because they're serious problems and every time you feel a little bit sad and you have munchies and you know like a oreo cheers you up it doesn't mean that you have a, an eating disorder because then it takes away the seriousness of this whole or for example depression another like good example to explain the sort sometimes people feel sad but if they say oh i'm depressed i think it's taken away uh the seriousness of the whole thing from people with uh, uh, like clinical depression with real issues okay two questions uh question one mm. uh you have uh, like you have munchies so you want to eat um do you have episodes like you just feel you lost your mind you lost your control and you think that, like you just like went insane and go on a binge and you couldn't uh, control yourself did that ever happen to no, you? no 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 this is why i say okay I think you... I, this is why I, okay. I say it's important not to you know not to put these things okay so you, you don't you have don't that have... yeah okay i mean okay. i'll just say you know i i just know people who really don't care about food or drinking when they you know they have other ways of dealing with their emotions okay so you know okay. that's like a good way to describe it eating i'm eating my emotions uh -huh. uh, and so, that, you know you feel so, sad so, you so eat some soup simple question mm -hmm. simple question so you don't have that uh, like uh, this kind of insane like uh, kind of in a trance kind of control just okay then you are fine you are no. fine another question another question mm, um uh i don't know how to say this and not a rule uh come on okay i'm so, russian i can uh, handle it we both we both don't have this typical like a slim body mm -hmm. do you have a, a what like, are you talking about you're so tiny uh yeah like uh, in china i'm very very fat uh, growing up i never i was also fatter then but growing up, even now, probably I can never really find a, a pair of pants that uh, fit me. Oh yeah, um, I know your yeah. pants. Yeah. So the the question is, the question is, we we both neither of us have this like a perfect like a standard slim body. Um, are you in peace with your shape? Not really. You know, I've been struggling all my life. I still feel like, you know, especially for stage, mm -hmm. I feel like the image is so important. I feel like you look more, maybe it's just, you know, stupid thing, thing in my head, but I feel you look more um, convincing, you know, mm -hmm. when you are, you know, nobody well, you says, oh, it's just, you know, a funny fat person or whatever. I feel like you look more convincing. Okay. And there are so, uh, you know, I'm not gonna talk, I'm not, I don't want to spin down in the whole like feminism and versus women talk. But I think there's uh, way more different variants of male beauty yeah. rather than female uh, uh, beauty if we're talking about conventional attraction. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. Because if you look at male uh -huh. sex symbols, like in, in, in YouTube and stuff, uh -huh. like on one hand you they have. They are masculine guys, they are slimming guys. There are so, so many different guys. Like for example, you have Brad Pitt who is a sex symbol, no doubt. You have Pierce Brosnan or you have Adrian Brody. And I can't imagine a woman looking like Adrian Brody uh, being a uh, you know conventional actress being in every movie. Or on the other hand, you have my favorite, Jack Black. Mm -hmm. And you know, he doesn't look like any of them. So everybody mm -hmm. loves him and uh, he makes a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you know. Okay. so. And how's your feeling now? How old are you? I'm 31. Wow, so at the age of 31, um, are you at peace with your shape? I think I'm all right with it, but I'm, I always have this thought that, okay, I need to eat less, I need to lose weight. Now I'm in Edinburgh, I'm walking 15,000 steps a day. I think, oh, I hope I'm gonna come back home. I'm gonna step on the scales and it's gonna be minus 25 kg <laughs> or something like this. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay. it's, always, it's there, it's always there. Uh. You know, it's definitely, moving to the UK helps a lot because it's not as lookist country as Russia, for example, uh -huh. you know, or as you said, in China, it's pretty much the same. Uh, in Russia, people really judge you on the way you look. Uh, all the, all the fancy nails. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. They, you have to, you have to look very good all the time. Mm -hmm. Only for women, by the way. Mm -hmm. Men don't give a shit. They all look oh, like yeah. potato sack. <laughs> Except for my friends watching. You are handsome guys. <laughs> um, yeah. So you really have to try hard all the time. You don't have a right to look bad because then you know, just, just you know, lots of people are gonna take you down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On that. And I even see it in on Instagram. I have a Russian account and I have a British account. And when I scroll through my Russian reels, oh, people just like taking down women. Both men, women, everybody's gonna tell you something about the way you look. Even if you're making a video about making a sandwich, which is absolutely non-related uh -huh. with the way the person looks. Uh -huh. But when I look at like, you know, Instagram here, people don't really talk that much about how, the way other people look. Mm -hmm. And I think it's quite nice. I feel really? I think you are on the wrong, like maybe you follow wrong people. They are, oh. Because there are lots of people are into that. Um, and the, okay, the question is, with Sam, your husband, mm. um, does he appreciate your body? Absolutely, yes. Uh -huh. Oh, we're in love with each other. Mm -hmm. So much, yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, does this change your own perspective? Yeah, of course. Of course, it's very, you know, it's, it's important to uh have a person in your life that supports you in every aspect i feel like mm -hmm. it really completes me because mm -hmm. as i told you i still don't have this you know like platform inside myself where i can rely on mm -hmm. when i don't need mm -hmm. uh appreciation from everyone else when i don't need you know mm -hmm. positive feedback mm -hmm. all the time so i feel like it's really really good it really helps um mm -hmm. you know i'm so glad that i met him so i i um uh so I understand you are on a journey, like uh, accepting, like to learn you are beautiful. Uh, when this journey began? Oh, I think when you, if you were a little girl, when you start, you know. You, no, uh, the, for, for example, like, because my journey didn't start always uh, as a little girl. As a little girl, I hated myself. Oh no, I uh, thought when you, when you started feeling like it's, uh, there's something no, wrong about when you. When did you yes, start girl. to learn that you are beautiful, you are appreciated, you, you, it's okay to be your own shape and beauty comes many, many uh, expressions. When is this moment kicking in or this phase you start to slowly learn that? Hmm, I, I can't pinpoint like a certain moment i think i uh, i was i'm really like my previous relationship for this one was also like a very nice and appreciated guy who really helped me to kind of restore myself from a previous toxic relationship uh, have you had I, have you had a relationship sorry for interrupting no, 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 no. have you had a relationship where your partner tell you you are fat you have to lose weight yeah yeah like i mean you know most of us did so did i mm -hmm. and that was quite traumatizing how but, old you know, were you i was very young i think it was between uh, 18 and like 22. and uh, what was your reaction back then well when you're so young you don't really understand what's going on and uh, when you have a, like a long term relationship you really um i don't know you um traumatize each other so much so it was definitely like more of a codependent relationship mm -hmm. but the guy was very very handsome and i thought oh my god i'm dating a handsome guy who's also famous in my hometown so i must not be complete shit so it kind of this 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 kind of thinking yeah so i i asked this is because uh Mihai, that guy, he is my partner. Um, before Mihai, I had another relationship. Uh, his name is Sam. Sam, you are watching it. <laughs> Fuck French. Um, so um, he he's a good guy. He's a good guy. We stayed as friends. Uh, he has a good heart. I appreciate Sam, but he's not a good partner. And. Uh, he keeps telling me that I'm fat and he doesn't feel the attraction for me and he keeps asking me to lose weight and he told me that he feels that he has a great body he offered this to me I'm not offering, offering the same thing back and he will blame me for our sex life because I'm not attractive I'm so sad it happened to you so, it's really really shit and uh, as as a woman who never really, really be loved, uh, not really, like, as a, a fatherless girl, mm -hmm. growing up, you just, you care about this male recognition so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
and uh, not having a father really make you feel like you don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't know better. I listened to him. I tried to lose weight. I blamed myself so much, and I believed that I'm just not attractive. Then I'm gonna be high. He told me how beautiful I am. He loves the shape I am. He and uh, he loves for who I am. It really, really helps because, uh, uh, for example, I said many times on this podcast anymore. Uh, I, I already. Uh, a comedian, a fellow comedian, a person I trust a lot, not only a colleague but also a friend. Uh, the person I'm the most close to for almost two years in comedy. I invite them to do a project with me, uh, to join my project, but uh, it didn't go smoothly. Uh, in the heat of the moment, they said to me, they said, uh, Oni, you are rude, you hurt people. People are talking shit behind your back. This, I already have so much social anxiety, and uh, and this push me to a downward uh, spiral. I wasn't really able to do sports mm -hmm. for more than six months because where I will go, I just hear people will hate me. Mm -hmm. I just feel so anxious to be there, and. Uh, can you remind me why I said this? We were talking about body image. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. How you know toxic relationships and yeah. stuff like that. And uh, I'm so grateful to have me high as my partner because uh, I, I would I, I just sometimes I'm amazed. I'm like, who would love me? Who would love me? Like I'm I I don't understand who would love me because I don't. But uh, when you meet the right partner, they appreciate you for who mm -hmm. you are. That's true. And for example, when I was with Sun, uh, and uh, when there are some incident happen in public, when we were not treated fairly, I would uh, come up to argue, to to speak up. And Sam, he would very often he would shame me. He would say I'm being a big silly. He feels he's he's embarrassed. He doesn't appear happy. But the way it's with me high. Do you know me high? Yeah. Hey, if you know me, how you know he's a pussy. And he, I don't know him that well uh, to know that he's a pussy, but <laughs> he's a big pussy. He he never have. He's very shy. He never has the courage to uh, stood up for himself. So when I argue, he just stand behind my back, mm -hmm. back, back, and uh, he. Well, after it finished, he would cheer me up. He would thank me, and he would be so happy. I spoke up for us. Uh, and uh, I I realized that uh, no matter how much you think you don't deserve to be loved, especially if you are a girl, you are a woman, really, really, you, if you are in a toxic relationship, if you believe nobody will love you, it's not true, it's not true. The world is so big, there are so many weirdos out there and they will love you because they are fucking insane. And uh, you, this person will show up. And uh, We've seen a very funny picture, uh, like a meme. And it was like all people like jigsaw puzzles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But some of them like a really simple shape and they very easily find someone who's yeah. going to fit. And yeah. some of them like a really ridiculous shape and they need to find... So, you know, when we are... I think it just comes with uh, being, we're all complicated people, but I think, you know, it just comes with that. Uh -huh. Just you find someone who, who is for you. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I, I really, really like it. Oh, it's very, very nice in to my, work together. In my life, like, I just, it's beyond my imagination because I had such bo body image issues, mm -hmm. like, uh, like I had a like I was a teenager, I had a crush on a guy of my school. Thinking back it's because he's one of the first guys in my life didn't bully me, didn't insult me or discriminate me. He treated me like a normal human. He was nice to me. So I madly fell in love with him, but he doesn't love me back. 
I wanted his love for so many years. From 15 uh, to the early 20s. And then at the end, after the different relationship, he was, he, he had a period, finally he realized I was there for him. He wanted to be with me. And I just, we were in the same city, but I refused to meet him because I was just so ashamed of my body. And I really, really wanted to fuck him because I was going abroad and I just want to have sex with him, like to lose my virginity with him. But I was so afraid because I'm just afraid he'll be disgusted when he loves me. And for like, really like, for many, many years after sex, I was just so ashamed of my body. I, I don't feel comfortable. But I forgot what I want to say again. I have an ADHD, so it doesn't matter. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, are you a happy person growing up? I would say, I would say so. Yeah. Uh -huh. I think you know my mom because I, I you know I grew up with mom and grandma. They tried really hard for me to have a good childhood and good education, and the you know. I'm really, really grateful to them. So you are raised by good women. Yeah, and two, the, two very good, very good women. And uh, how's the man in your life? Mm -hmm. the, how's the man in your uh, family? Are they good men? Are they? There are non-existent men. Okay, okay. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, I come from a family where all women are divorced. Okay. My grandma has five sisters all of them divorced wow that's great so, yeah. that's a good sign yeah that's, well, especially, that's you know, a rebellion in the 60s and the 70s yeah. in the soviet union yeah they were all divorcing their yeah. alcoholic husbands and i think yeah. yeah that's really good that's a rebellion against against the 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 male power and mm -hmm. it's really wow that's powerful that's powerful and uh, so you grow up with friends were you yeah. liked yeah I, I would say so yeah i don't think you know i always had my bullies and stuff i had you know all of these uh cool girls i would say i was quite cool at school at some point because at the in high school i was a dj of the school party uh, and that's a very cool job to have uh -huh. as your like first job you know what I'm so saying? were you always creative so, artistic i would think so i, w I wouldn't i wasn't very performative i was more like you know like painting i like you know coming up with things but i didn't really perform a lot i really liked english and i started learning it from a very very early age also thanks to my mom uh-huh well, um, why why thanks to your mom because in russian schools english is not very good mm -hmm. and if you want to speak good english you have to study extracurriculum outside yeah. of school yeah. and that costs a lot of money and at that, those times we didn't have lots of like English schools in our city, only one. And it was it, it was very pricey. So my mom made sure that I studied English like throughout my school for ten years. I also studied English all that time. And this is how I'm I, I, I not only I speak good English, then I went to the university, I, I studied English there for six years. It was my major. Yeah, let's uh, move a but bit. I also, it's, uh, oh yeah, always very, very closing again. Uh, not this way. Maybe that way. Ah, uh, I don't it's know. It's gonna be behind us if we're gonna. Behind us. Where yeah. should should we move? You know. I think, I think you turn this way because then the sound. This way. I think it's equally bad, so let's just stay, <laughs> it's stay here. Bad. Yeah, it's stay here. Yeah, but how about if you don't you like press something and it 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 goes to? Uh... No, so I already put a sunglass on it. Ah. There's not much I can do anymore. No, so okay. continue. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So mom put a lot of effort into me, you know, paying for my English classes because I loved it so much and it was my favorite thing, and eventually changed my life. And you know? and did you have siblings? No, I'm the only child. Uh huh. Do you do you think you benefit from that? Oh, that's interesting because I never really thought about it in that way. I think it's hard. Uh, I don't know if it's good. I don't know what it feels like to grow with siblings. Uh, it's good to have friends. Like they are like your automatic friends if you have a good relationship uh -huh. with them, no matter what. It's good to have support because my husband uh -huh. has two brothers, and I see that it's you know it's a really it's a great relationship with family. It becomes very big. And I think it's hard in a way when you grow older and 
and your parents are not getting young, then it's uh, a bit harder because you can't, it's, you know, it's only you who has to take care of them uh, at some point. Yeah. And, you know, my mom and grandma, they're both pretty young, so I don't have to worry about it, hopefully, for a very, very long time. But it's just, you know, the feeling. Yeah, it's slightly better, slightly better. Okay. Uh, Edinburgh, who would know it's so sunny? Come here. Yeah, come on, it's good. Yeah. So, for me, like, I definitely think I benefit uh, from the fact that uh, I, I don't have any siblings mm -hmm. because uh, my family were really, really poor. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I had siblings, there's no chance I can get the education I got. Mm -hmm. It wouldn't happen in my family if I had a had a brother uh, that uh, they prefer brother than me because my mom told me that after the, I, I divorced I, I grew up without a father mm -hmm. and uh, she told me the only reason she took me with her is because I'm a girl mm -hmm. if I'm a boy she'll leave me there mm -hmm. and uh, uh, so I know I wouldn't be discriminated because I'm a girl because my mom was discriminated her whole life, so she wouldn't do that to me. Mm -hmm. But I do feel like, uh, although lots of uh, people uh, justify about uh, to uh, uh, criticize the one-child policy, mm -hmm. but I do feel because of the one-child policy, lots of girls benefited from it because uh, uh, the. The, the people they need to learn, the parents they need to learn, the last generation they need to learn that uh, uh, to love their girl because that's the only, only child they have. And I, I, I believe uh, because of this, uh, lots of girls got the education mm -hmm. they wouldn't have had. And uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, the podcast is uh, coming to an end. Uh, you have uh, anything to add? No, it's just, you know, it was really nice talking to you. Yeah. I'm glad if we're going to make friends because uh -huh. you seem like a super cool person and I love your Aww. stuff. And you do so many things. I've been here last year and I looked and I've seen your show. You were doing two shows last year, two, two solo, solo shows. Show, yeah. And I've seen your Black Widows and stuff uh -huh. and I thought, boy, she's so hard working. Uh -huh. Yeah, but I, you know, didn't didn't have a chance to meet you last yeah. year, but I yeah. performed at Mihai shows last uh -huh. year. So we finally met, and I'm really glad we did, yeah. because you were super cool. By the way, it's not hard to work, it's uh, mental illness. Like when you are so busy doing things, when you commit into seven projects a day, mm -hmm. you don't have time to commit to suicide. So it's <laughs> my coping mechanism. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and when I'm not working so hard, this voice inside of me, She's just telling me I'm I'm lazy. Okay. Yeah. I know I know the feeling. I know yeah, the yeah, feeling. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I never I never have this thing when I just can lie down on the sofa and mm -hmm. just chill. Yeah. Because uh, like during the day, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Because immediately when I lie down, I'm like, oh my god, oh my god, everybody's earning money, but I'm just uh -huh. here, you know, doing uh -huh. nothing. So yeah, definitely. Maria, I, I uh, you want to tell the audience what shows you are doing this year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. My show is called Russian Mafia Family. Uh -huh. It's at 10.50 at the Apex Hotel Grass Market every uh -huh. day, 10.50 in the evening, that's important. Uh -huh. And the show, jokes from the show, got me shortlisted for BBC New Comedy wow, Awards cool. to, cool. Like, I, like 10 days ago. Oh, so great. maybe I'm the next big thing, who knows? Okay. Maria, um, I, I really, really uh, would love to see you uh, as often as possible at Black Widows. That's very So lovely. if you want to do it, feel free to contact Dasha. I can put you to open. Yeah. So by 10 or oh, oh, 9 55, you'll get the first Yeah, yeah, yeah. There. Lovely yeah. stuff. Yes, yeah, yeah. we'll do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah thank you so much. So if you come to Berlin, please let me know. We'll do uh, so. We can accommodate you. I'm, I don't need a visa to go to Berlin. Okay, I can okay. come to yeah. Berlin. We we'll yeah, have a spare room. Seven night. We have a, a spare room, and I'm totally happy you oh, be there. You're yeah. so lovely. We're yeah, going to yeah. come with Sam. Okay. Fuck Sam! Uh, <laughs> no, my Sam. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> cool! Then that's I'm the sad, I'm sad that your experience with Sam's is not a